my beauties, welcome back to Younger. Today we're going to be talking about lasers as the future of skincare. And before I move on, I ask that you like and comment on this video and subscribe to my page and share this video with anyone who may find it useful. So the reason why I wanted to talk about lasers as an important component of skincare and the future of skincare is because lasers are now more accessible, they're more affordable, and they're a, a very needed component of skincare because they've come a long way in the technology. And now, back in the day, we used to rely on skincare products and creams and peels and uh, just topical solutions to improve the quality and the overall health of our skin. But now, lasers can help us achieve these goals, can help us achieve a more youthful look with beautiful radiant skin that has a glow that we can't really just achieve with topical products and skincare alone. So it's now something that is becoming more mainstream and is more accessible to everyone. And I just kind of want to educate you and kind of talk about the past, present, and future of lasers and the role that they play in skincare. So the history of lasers began back in the 1950s and 60s where lasers were used for different areas of medicine. And it wasn't until the mid to late 90s that the first laser was really engineered for a more specific dermatologic or cosmetic use. And that was in laser tattoo removal and laser hair removal. And one of my biggest mentors who taught me everything I know about lasers is Dr. Suzanne Kilmer. And she was one of Rox Anderson's first fellow. And this was at Mass General at Wellman Labs at Harvard and MIT in Massachusetts in Boston. So it was one of my lifelong dreams to train with Dr. Kilmer. And after graduating from UCLA and completing my residency in dermatology at UCLA, I did advanced fellowship training with Dr. Kilmer and learned from her. And it was one of the biggest honors that I've ever had in my career to be able to learn about these devices and lasers from Dr. Kilmer. So just along the way, at each decade, they have improved in the technology of these lasers and lasers can now become incorporated into our skincare regimen and our routine in the years to come that will allow us to have healthy, beautiful skin. And so just starting from laser hair removal and laser tattoo removal, how these devices have been engineered to do different things, I always explain to my patients, lasers are like shoes. You're gonna wear your heels to one event, you're gonna wear your sneakers to another event, you're gonna wear your Nikes when you work out. There's different lasers that are engineered to do different things and to achieve different goals. And so you pick and choose the right ones for the type of skin ailment that you're trying to treat or correct or even just trying to achieve overall skin health, what does that look like? What type of laser would be right for you? And so I want to also correct any misconceptions out there. I have a lot of uh, followers and subscribers who ask, can I not have laser because of XYZ? Because I have darker skin type, or because I have a history of vitiligo, or because I've had scarring in the past. Lasers are very powerful devices, and when they're in the wrong hands, can cause complications. So. Just like I always say, always check the credentials of your laser specialist and laser surgeon because you want to look at their before and afters and just really get a feel for the experience that they have because these are powerful devices. And unless you really understand the physics behind how these machines work, you're not really going to maximize the potential to get the best outcome or you'll be too hesitant and you'll undertreat to avoid any complications for the fear of not knowing and not have your patients have the best outcome. So again, lasers have come a far way and in the hands of a skilled laser operator, it can have a really profound long-term effect on the skin, especially starting at a younger age. A lot of my patients are in their 20s, 30s, and in even the 40s and 50s and 60s, you can reverse sun damage and reverse melasma and brown spots and textural irregularities and pigment irregularities, but it's better to prevent them from happening in the first place. Just like, you, I always say this, just like you work out and you eat clean and you maintain a healthy lifestyle and balance, you want to invest in your skin. You want to invest in the best overall skincare that you possibly have because your skin is the only skin that you're going to be in for the rest of your life. And it's the first thing that people see and it's an outward representation of your internal health and how well you take care of your body. So in addition to using eye creams and night creams and morning antioxidants and growth factors and ceramides and retin-A derivatives, you want to be able to incorporate lasers somehow into your skincare regimen and that is the future. 
meaning people who don't do that or people who are not starting to kind of take care of their skin and get on the laser bandwagon are going to be falling behind because people their age are doing these things and when compared to people who don't have lasers incorporated into their skincare routine, there's gonna be a difference in their skin. I sometimes am floored when I open the door and walk into a clinic room and I see a 60 or 70 year old patient who has this beautiful skin, who's never had any cosmetic surgery, but just the texture and tone of their skin is beautiful. And almost every time when I ask them, what is your secret, what do you do? Usually they've been wearing sunscreen their whole life, but also these are the patients who have had an early exposure to lasers. So a lot of my 60 and 70 year old patients will say, well, I've been getting you know CO2, CO2 laser or fractional resurfacing for years now. And that's how I know as a provider how important that lasers are in a skincare regimen. And the more accessible they become over the next few years and even decades, and the more readily available they are, the more affordable they are, the cost is lower now than it used to be before. And back in the day, lasers used to be these huge devices that were like the size of a small refrigerator. Now they look like little MacBooks. Like they're very portable, they're very easy to transport, they're very easy to have access to, and they're at a more affordable cost nowadays. And they've been engineered to kind of go on the lighter side to take a more preventative approach. So for example, Clear and Brilliant or Clear and Brilliant Permea, it's a very minimal superficial laser. We always call it like a fractal facial or a little laser facial because there's little to no downtime. You may be red about an hour or two after the treatment, but that's more from the numbing cream than anything. It's not painful or uncomfortable. It doesn't really throw a wrench in your social calendar or throw a wrench in your day. You know, you just show up at the office, have numbing place for about 30 to 60 minutes get a little fractal resurfacing with clear and brilliant per mail which if you guys follow me on Instagram you see I post on that quite often and there's little to no downtime and maybe the next day or the day after 24 to 48 hours later you'll have a little bit of pinpoint kind of like a roughness to your skin that will desquamate and kind of exfoliate off and then you'll have this beautiful clear radiant skin about a week later that will last for several months and doing things like this being proactive it's like working out for your skin it's like going to the gym if you just sit there and really want to become toned and have you know more volume and larger muscles you're not just going to think about it or take a pill you're going to have to go to the gym you're going to have to exercise those muscles and then you're going to have to eat protein and make them bigger and have more volume your skin is the same thing it needs to wake up it needs to be stimulated it needs to be treated with a resurfacing device now it doesn't have to be like a fraxel repair or a fraxel restore these are ablative and non-ablative lasers that can have some downtime they can be a little bit uncomfortable Clear and Brilliant, again, is just a very superficial, mild resurfacing laser that will just kind of just remove that dead skin cell layer off the top of the skin. It will reduce pore size. It will even out any little brown spots or freckles or melasma. It will help prevent future wrinkles and future enlarged pores and sebaceous gland hyperplasia and all those little lumps and bumps that we get as we get wiser and have birthdays. It'll keep your skin refreshed and new. It's kind of like hitting the refresh button on your computer. It's going to keep refreshing the screen and just keep it clean. Keep those fibroblasts stimulated to make collagen. Keep those sebaceous glands with down in number and size so you don't have these blackheads and these big dilated pores. It just kind of keeps everything in check. And again, patients will say, well, how often do I have to do this? I mean, you look at the celebrities, they're doing these kinds of things once every couple of months, maybe even weeks, you know, but if you can just do it at least once a year, I mean, the, you know, the cost of some of these lasers are anywhere from three to $500 sometimes a treatment. And if you could just do one a year, that would be great, especially if you can start in your 20s. I remember I started in my early 20s and I had early access to this, of course. And of course, I'm a dermatologist, so I have access to everything, lasers, devices, peels, products, all that stuff. But that's my job as a dermatologist. Of course, I'm going to take advantage of it. But I want to pass on this information to you and to tell you not to be afraid of lasers. And it doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be this very expensive treatment that's going to put you out for a week or you're, you know, if you Google, you know, fractal or resurfacing or laser, you'll see this horror stories. Those are more of like the more intense, aggressive lasers that sometimes even need general anesthesia to be performed very comfortably. But again, just doing a little clear and brilliant fractal or even doing a laser resurfacing that's a little bit more intense. If it's the ablative form, that's the kind that causes a little bit more redness and you have about a week of downtime where you look a little bit sunburned, but you may want to get hit harder with one of those lasers, like under the eyes for under eye wrinkles, not only to treat wrinkles, but more importantly to prevent them from starting and be, take a more preventative, proactive approach. 
So we always say, you know, things like going to the gym. You go to the gym not only to look good, but also to make sure that you're going to stay healthy and strong and maintain a healthy body for the decades to come. You don't wait until your body's falling apart to start getting stronger. You want to just have a whole lifetime kind of habit of taking good care of your skin. And the reason why lasers are important in skincare and their future skincare is because we incorporate them into different skincare products that we use on a daily basis. Again, your growth factors, your antioxidants, your hydrators, using maybe an enzymatic peel once in a while, getting your facials done, having a hydrofacial where you're having a mechanical exfoliation and infusion of um, really helpful serums and antioxidants by your esthetician, throwing in a laser every once in a while. So just mixing it up is really, really important. And for those who are not doing these kinds of things, you're falling behind and people in your age group are probably doing these kinds of things to make their skin healthy and look their best. Another thing that laser resurfacing is good for and lasers are really good for is just to kind of maintain overall skin health and the texture of your skin. So I'm not just talking pore size, fine lines, wrinkles, keeping blackheads gone, but it's also just keeping those little bumpy, annoying, benign lesions that happen on your skin. So not everything is skin cancer, and I'm a fellowship trained Mohs micrographic surgeon, and so I, I'm very well versed in skin cancer, but I'm talking more from a, um, from a more cosmetic standpoint right now, where sometimes people who have healthy skin have these little benign bumps and you start to get them in your 20s and 30s and they accumulate with time. A lot of times they're genetic. There's things called milia, which are like these little cysts that are too deep for you to kind of pick at yourself. You usually have to go to dermatologists to get them removed. Sebaceous gland hyperplasia, which are those little like bumps that you get on your skin that aren't skin cancer, but they're these little hard bumps that don't go away and can just make your skin look terrible if they accumulate over time. Um, angiofibromas, angiokeratomas, or fibrous papules. These are just little benign growths. Like when you're out with your friends or you're at a nice dinner with your boyfriend or your husband or your spouse or your partner and you have the light hit you in a certain way and you have like bumps on your skin or these little lumpy bumpy things, you don't want that. No one wants that. You want a pure and beautiful texture and lasers kind of help. Like I said, it's like resetting, the, refreshing the screen. It's just going to keep your, your skin healthy from within on a cellular level and it's going to prevent those little lumps and bumps from happening over time. And different lasers are engineered to do different things. There's the V-beam laser, which can help with under eye discoloration and bags and circles so that you won't have to rely on your concealer. So you can you know, just jump out of the ocean without any concealer and not have to hide behind your glasses or your concealer anymore. There's the Permea, which is a clear and brilliant option. Um, the Permea laser just kind of helps even out tones. So like melasma, I even suffer from melasma because I'm on the birth control pill. And ever since you know I've been on the pill after having kids, I have melasma. And I struggle with that, so I have to do a clear and brilliant for me on myself every couple of months to keep my melasma in check. So different lasers do different things. Again, if you have acne scars, for example, if they're the red type of acne scars, you would use a V-beam or a pulse dye laser. If you have pitted or ice pick scars where there's a textural irregularity, where there's like a dip or like almost like little ice picks in your cheek, you would need more of a fractional resurfacing device. If you have hyperpigmentation or hyperpigmented scarring, you would probably need a Q-Switch Alexandrite laser. So again, there's different lasers that are engineered to do different things, and every individual is different. For overall health, like I said, Clear and Brilliant for me is the way to go, just to keep your skin healthy and on a cellular level, keep it refreshed, and that's like a long-term um, plan that you'd want to be on, and it's the way of the future. But if you have certain little things, broken blood vessels, dark circles under your eyes, um, brown spots, brown patches, um, red acne scars, rosacea with like redness and flushing, there's different lasers that are engineered to take care of these things for you so you don't have to rely on some skin cream, which is A, not going to be that powerful, and B, is never going to come close to what a laser can do. And again, lasers aren't something that you have to do every month or every day, but it's just, you know, once in a while, just to kind of keep your skin looking its best. It's something that should and can be incorporated and is the future of skincare. And so you should incorporate lasers into your skincare regimen, whether that's a quarterly or yearly or annual base, or say you've never had any laser resurfacing and you really are at a point in your life where you're like, okay, I want to have beautiful, radiant skin. I don't want to have to rely or hide behind makeup anymore. It may take a couple laser treatments to get your skin on point, but then to maintain it after that, it's very easy. So that is why the future of skincare incorporates lasers and they're only going to get smarter, faster, more affordable, and more accessible for everyone. And that's a good thing for everyone to rest. Hope this helps you guys.